Ronna McDaniel, the former chair of the RNC, the Republican National Committee, one of the top leaders in the Republican Party, who thankfully was fired recently because we still have a lot of housekeeping to do to clear out the swamp creatures who masquerade as normal Republicans. And so she was just hired then by NBC to be a contributor on NBC and MSNBC, the same corporate conglomerate, as the election is now rapidly approaching. And because she does not yet have Trump derangement syndrome, she probably is infected with it, but she's not showing a lot of symptoms. She probably will have stage four Trump derangement syndrome at the end of the year, but she doesn't have it now. And so... That upset every single one of the hosts on those networks, and they openly revolted. I ring a former RNC chair, Ronna McDaniel. Well, uh, she was on Sunday's Meet the Press. It was her first appearance since the NBC and since NBC News hired her as a political analyst. Uh, I know you won't be surprised to know that we've been inundated with calls this weekend, as have. Uh, uh, most people connected with this network about NBC's decision to hire her. Uh, we learned about the hiring when we read about it in the press on Friday. Uh, we weren't asked our opinion of the hiring, but if we were, we would have strongly objected to it for several re reasons. Well, it's one reason, to be clear, because the Marxist cable news networks don't usually allow any Republicans on their panels who aren't rhinos who actually support Donald Trump. They only have the rhinos on who masquerade as Republicans, but then every word that comes out of their mouth is them just trashing the Republican Party and Donald Trump. They don't want their audience to hear a variety of different perspectives. Just like the Daily Wire doesn't want their audience to hear a variety of different perspectives about one particular topic regarding Ben Shapiro's favorite foreign country. But that's a whole other video. Check yesterday's report in case you missed it, because you definitely got to see that. Part of our resilience as a democracy is going to be recognizing, us recognizing, when decisions are bad ones and reversing those bad decisions. Hearing legitimate criticism, responding to it, and correcting course. Not digging in, not blaming others. Take a minute. Acknowledge that maybe it wasn't the right call. It is a sign of strength, not weakness, to acknowledge when you were wrong. It is a sign of strength. And our country needs us to be strong right now. Well, it is a sign of strength to ban other perspectives from being heard by the American people, but that's kind of a bad use of strength. This host is one of MSNBC's rhinos, just like Joe Scarborough, who literally pretends to be a Republican when, like I said, all they do is trash Republicans 24-7. In this instance, NBC News, either wittingly or unwittingly, is teaching election deniers that what they can do stretches well beyond appearing on our air in interviews to peddle lies about the sanctity and integrity of our elections, which Ronna McDaniels did yesterday on Meet the Press. She means questioning the security and the accuracy of electronic voting machines and mail-in ballots because, well, those kinds of questions and conversations aren't allowed in communist countries. What we've also said to election deniers is not just they can do that on our airwaves, but that they can do that as one of us as badge-carrying employees of NBC News, as paid contributors to our sacred airwaves. How dare somebody who works for a mainstream media outlet in America question the security of electronic voting machines and mail-in ballots? Let me deal with the elephant in the room. Yeah. I think our bosses owe you an apology for putting you in this situation. She had to interview her earlier. Because I don't know what to believe. She is now a paid contributor by NBC News. Well, I have no idea whether any answer she gave to you was because she didn't want to mess up her contract. Mm. Um, she wants us to believe that she was speaking for the RNC when the RNC was paying for it. So she has, she has credibility issues that she still has to deal with. Yeah. Is she speaking for herself or is she speaking on behalf of who's paying her? Actually, Cuck Todd, if she was speaking for NBC News, she would be endorsing Joe Biden, but she is where she belongs. Or I guess I should say she was where she belongs because she was soon fired after the host's insurrection. NBC News leadership has announced that former RNC chair Ronna McDaniel will not be an NBC News contributor. We have a new email 
and update that's come out just within this hour. So this is sort of breaking news here within our organization on a story that has garnered significant uh, attention and criticism. And what I'm going to do now, to be very clear, is read the entire update uh, from NBC Universal News Group Chairman Cesar Conde. They had an insurrection and overthrew, overruled what the CEO of NBC News decided. He goes on to write that no organization, particularly a newsroom, can succeed unless it is cohesive and aligned. Over the last few days... Aligned with the Marxist Party. <laughs> of course, get rid of any dissenting voice. It has become clear that disappointment undermines that goal. I mean, what's next? Is he going to apologize for hiring too friendly of a Republican to give the Republican perspective during election coverage? <laughs> oh, wait, what's this? The news chairman continues to say, quote, I want to personally apologize to our team members who felt we let them down. While this was a collective recommendation by some members of our leadership team, I approved it and take full responsibility for it, says Cesar Conde, the chairman. Meme maker Grand Ole Memes put together this gem showing the Republican Party giving her the boot and her being welcomed by MSNBC. <laughs> Only to be, well, as you can see, gotten rid of. This is a woman who never would have been hired by the RNC if the party hadn't been hijacked by rhinos. A woman who was proud to have a big tent party that doubled the LGBTQ people in the Republican Party. Happy Pride Month, she tweeted, because today the Republican Party has veered so far left that it's further to the left today than the Democrat Party was under Obama. Meanwhile, in Russia, they just added the Rainbow Movement to the list of extremist and terrorist organizations, showing that Russia's not all bad. Donald Trump posted on Truth Social, wow, Ronald McDaniel got fired by fake news NBC. She only lasted two days, and this after McDaniel went out of her way to say what they wanted to hear. It leaves her in a very strange place. It's called Never Never Land, and it's not a place you want to be. These radical left lunatics are crazy, and the top people at NBC are weak. They were broken and embarrassed by low ratings, highly overpaid, supposed talent. Bring back the free and fair press. Make America great again. And speaking of True Social, the company was miraculously approved to go public, or rather Donald Trump's parent company, which owns True Social, the Trump Media and Technology Group, was approved to go public and is now listed on the stock exchange, catapulting Donald Trump's net worth by another six and a half billion dollars. Peter Schiff had a very interesting take on the situation that will probably get him indicted by the Biden Justice Department for, you know, conspiring campaign finance fraud, where he said, instead of donating to Trump's campaign, supporters should just buy DJT, that's the ticker tape symbol, then Trump can borrow against his own appreciated shares tax-free to self-fund his presidential campaign. Trump will win in a landslide, and all those MAGA supporters who bought DJT shares will get rich. He went on to say, campaign finance laws place limits on how much money individuals can donate to a candidate. But there are no limits to how many shares of DJT those supporters can buy. Trump owns almost 60% of DJT, so wealthy Trump supporters can get around those donation limits by buying DJT. <laughs> and just to be clear, I'm not endorsing this strategy. I am not giving any financial advice or agreeing with what could be construed as financial advice coming from Peter Schiff. I am just reporting as a media analyst what he said about the situation. I will give you my opinion, however, that I personally would not invest any more into DJT stock than I could afford to lose without really caring. I would not invest into the stock expecting to get rich or even expecting to make any money. If I were to do it, I would just view it as something fun to do, sort of like buying somebody a lottery ticket for their birthday because the government agencies and law firms are going to do everything that they can to try to destroy the value for shareholders. But it is a fantastic thing that Donald Trump has gotten a massive boost in his net worth and I certainly hope that it continues. But the best part of NBC firing Ron McDaniel after, I believe it was only two days, maybe it was three, I didn't keep track, 
is that the network will most likely have to pay her the entire sum of her $600,000 contract. They have so much money, it doesn't matter. And that's how these media companies work. Remember, Fox News is still paying Tucker Carlson. They're paying him to not be on the air. They didn't cancel his contract. They're still paying him the remainder of what's due in his contract. Just like CNN paid Don Lemon like $25 million, even though they pulled him off of the air. Just like NBC paid Megyn Kelly. I think it was like tens of millions of dollars after she got fired, pulled from the air for saying that white kids could wear Halloween costumes of non-white characters. And just like the Daily Wire bought out the remainder of Candace Owens' contract, who walked away with millions and millions of dollars. Because contrary to popular belief, it's not only always about the money to Ben Shapiro. I mean, <laughs> usually it is, but it's also about a particular message. And, of course, censoring those who dare to present an alternative message. Here's Joy Reid and Richard Maddow celebrating the decision. Um, so something happened. Another thing happened that is not about the abortion situation. Um, our chairman of the of the NBC Universal News Group, Cesar Conde, uh, who we both know very well, um, he sent a memo that we all got as employees here, uh, rescinding the hiring of Ronna Romney McDaniel. And I know I felt very strongly about it. I know you felt very strongly about it. I think everyone from four o'clock on, from Nicole all the way to midnight, we all felt very strongly and said so on our respective shows. Uh, yesterday. And I, I just have to say, when somebody does the right thing, I feel like it should be acknowledged as publicly as we acknowledged our outrage. And so I, I know how I feel about it. I am grateful to Caesar for actually making the right decision. I think it was the right decision, but I want to get your take as well. Uh, yes, I'm glad that MSNBC took a page out of the Daily Wire's playbook and fired on air talent before they could present any more of the other side of the story. Which reminds me, there were two other points I forgot to make in yesterday's video about the ongoing fallout over at the Daily Wire, over firing Candace Owens for expressing views held by the majority of Americans. And that is that Jeremy Boring, the CEO over there, once headed up Hollywood's conservative secret society a group called the Friends of Abe. And because he used to work in Hollywood. And so it basically is a group of conservative producers and writers. And, I mean, there are some, okay? And they would meet periodically at dinners and at private events in order to network and, you know, try to create contacts for each other and basically function as an underground conservative movement in liberal Hollywood. And the organization was founded by Gary Sinise. And then later in 2016, Jeremy Boring took it over as the director and then immediately shut it down. I did a whole video about the Friends of Abe, well, 10 years ago, if you want to go and see that one. That one will probably be the only one that comes up if you search for Mark Dice, Friends of Abe on YouTube. This one may come up because I just added some tags and descriptions to it, but I'm very bad at SEO, search engine optimization, which requires like writing descriptions and using different keyword tags and videos and stuff, which I need to start doing so that people can go and search and find videos of mine on particular topics. So if that one doesn't come up, the newer one, which is much more in depth, it's titled, I heard through the grapevine about an underground meeting in Hollywood. Here's what happened. And this is something that's too hilarious not to include in the discussion regarding the Daily Wire. For years, I had seen tweets floating around, purported to be from Ben Shapiro, about what I'm gonna show you here in a second. And it did seem like hypocrisy that he would engage in. But then, at the same time, I thought, maybe it's a meme, maybe somebody just made some fake tweets just to try to make a point about his hypocrisy. And so being your trusted media analyst, Instead of just showing the screenshots, which are floating around again, as you can imagine, I pulled up the original tweets. And to Ben's credit, he did not delete them. I think the owners of Ben & Jerry's are awful politically, but they make great ice cream, so I eat there because I'm not a vindictive a-hole. And that's his principled stance. And in a sense, he does have a point, because if you have a favorite band, for example, whose music you love, and then the band or the singer just starts spewing political nonsense on Twitter, you might still like their music. You still might want to go to their concerts. You still might not let that affect your view of their product. But then when it came out later that Ben and Jerry's was boycotting Israel, then Ben Shapiro all of a sudden had a totally new take on it, responding, oh, well, 
I guess I won't be eating any more of your ice cream. So for all those years, Ben and Jerry's literally put out Black Lives Matter flavor ice cream, and supported abortion, and virtually every liberal cause. And that was totally fine. Ben still bought their ice cream. But then as soon as they started criticizing Israel, then he dumps them. And because Ben and Jerry's is critical of Israel, now they're breaking the law because 37 different states have what are called anti-BDS laws, which mean that if you own a company and you criticize the country of Israel, then you're not allowed to have any government contracts. So probably won't affect Ben and Jerry's, although they're probably banned from all government facilities. But if they owned a construction company, or something like that, then they wouldn't be allowed to submit bids to get jobs for government work. I mean, you got to admit that it is strange, to say the least, that in the United States of America, there is one country that business owners are not allowed to criticize. Otherwise, they themselves will be banned from doing business with the government. And speaking of business, you may have heard that I have a t-shirt business at markdice.com where you can order awesome shirts like the free the January 6th hostages shirt, the sorry no vacancy deport them all shirt, the Donald Trump mugshot shirt, or any of my awesome designs. And today, today is the last day, you could save 10% off of anything by using the promo code ChristKing at the checkout. It was supposed to be Christ is King, but that's too long for the custom promo code module. So it is Christ King, one word. And that is because in case you missed it, Jeremy Boring over there, the leader of the Daily Wire, has declared that saying Christ is King can often be construed as anti-Semitic. So we don't cower to Christian phobes over here. We proudly proclaim that Christ is King. And if you're brave enough to use a supposed anti-Semitic promo code, you can save 10% off of anything over at markdice.com. So head on over there or click the link in the description below and check them out.